You're listening to Stand Out Get Noticed, episode 231. Hello, Rockstar. Welcome to Stand Out Get Noticed. I'm your host, Christina Cantors. I'm a speaker, coach, and the founder of The C Method, where I'm all about helping high performing professionals and business leaders to build powerful communication skills. You can learn more at thecmethod.com. Now, I want you to think about an area of your life that you're feeling stuck in or maybe not getting the results you want. Perhaps it's in your career, in your business in your communication, your relationships, health, finances, any area. Now think about the reasons why you are stuck in this position. And I want you to notice, do you start to attribute some blame to other people? Perhaps it's the fault of your clients or your boss or your spouse or your kids. Perhaps you find yourself blaming the weather or the market conditions or just the universe being against you. Or do you take full responsibility for everything that's happening to you? Do you take full responsibility for where you're at? Grant Cardone says, you need to take responsibility for all results. High performance, highly successful people take total responsibility for every outcome in their life. They never make excuses. And that is what we're talking about today. We're talking about what it means to take 100% responsibility. We're talking about the benefits of doing so and how to go about doing it. And joining me in this discussion is business coach, human behavioral specialist, and my good friend, Shannon Merlo. And I'm so excited to have her joining me. Shannon is the founder of Inspired Outcomes Consulting, where she helps small business owners stop being stuck in the busy and actually go home happy with their business. She's had over 20 years of experience in roles in management, marketing, project and operations management, and she is absolutely passionate about creating positive change for her clients. She's also recently launched a brand new online group coaching program for small business owners called How Do I Do This Business Shuff, <laughs> which you can find at inspired-outcomes.com. Now, while this conversation does have a focus on challenges faced by business owners, this applies to anyone who is feeling stuck. So if you want to deepen your understanding of how you think and behave, and you want to learn some powerful tools for getting unstuck and moving forward in your career, business, or life, then I highly recommend you keep listening. Show notes for this episode will be at thecmethod.com slash 231. Okay. Enjoy this one with Shannon Merlo. In life and in business, so I mean it's all one and the same essentially, but in the context of business and life, we can either be a victim of our circumstances or we can take responsibility and be empowered to make choices to change our reality. And that is what taking 100% responsibility is about. It's it's about making choices based on the fact that we own our reality, we own what's going on, positive or negative, and then we make choices based on that as opposed to when you're a victim, it's everyone else's fault that there's a problem. It's everyone else's fault that this is what reality is and then we're waiting for everyone else to change. But as business owners, we don't have time to wait for everyone else to change and we don't have time for market conditions to, ta- to change or our team members to change. We have to make the decision to change to be able to move things qu- forward more quickly. So you're saying that if I make a proposal to someone and they say, no, I don't want to work with you, then I need to take responsibility for, for that? Like, isn't that their problem? Well, no, because you didn't get the sale. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so that, I'm trying to think of some examples no, as to like what is um, – let's say someone like – someone drives into the back of my car, mm. right? And that's a, this is a really cool example of taking 100% responsibility. And yeah. this, this actually comes from Grant Cardone who is a sales mentor and coach. And he uses the example of a car accident and he says if someone runs up the back of your car, you are – 100% responsible and a lot of people flinch at this because they're like yeah. no 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 but they ran into me 
But if you take 100% responsibility, then it's that you made choices to leave the house at a certain time and you made a choice to take a certain route Mm -hmm. to get to where you were. You made certain choices to be in the lane that you were in. And through that, it's actually about going, well, if I hadn't have put myself in that situation, then I wouldn't have been there to be run into. So then through that, it, it's a, it, it is a case of, okay, well, I wasn't responsible for their driving. No, but you could have been driving more slowly. You could have been more aware of what you were doing. You could have left the house at a different time. All of those things lead you to be able to then make better choices about your life and your business in general. So taking that mentality, it's about broadening the mentality of taking responsibility for everything that happens. Mm-hmm. Um I think being late is a really good example where um, people tend to say, oh, I was late because of traffic and I missed mm. the bus and I missed this and I missed that. Well, did you get up with enough time? Did you take yes. too long having the shower? Yes. Did you <laughs> did you check the timetable? Did you check traffic conditions? All of that then empowers you to say, well, I'm, I'm actually not a victim of the traffic circumstances because if I had have actually planned it a little bit better, I would have been well ahead of time. So it's just those, those mm. choices that you make that become more empowering choices when you do take 100% responsibility for everything that happens. And I'm sure we all know someone who is constantly blaming other people or their circumstances for what's going on in their life. You know, like, oh, you know, my colleague never listens to me or, you know, so-and-so doesn't doesn't support me, which is why I can't get this idea across the line. Or, you know, market conditions are bad, which is why, you know, we can't sell our house. Um, or I'm sure we all know someone who is who can be constantly like that. Yeah. One of the classic examples that I see often when I'm working with business owners who have team members is the outsourcing of responsibility when team members are not performing right. in the way that they want them to do so. And this is a really important takeout for people who are working with other team members. It's really very much about saying, well, what am I doing as a leader that means that this person is not on the right path? What am I doing as a leader in terms of my communication, in terms of my management, in terms of my leadership, in terms of the time and energy that I'm putting into supporting my team to get the outcomes that I want? And if they're not performing, what are you doing as the leader in your business? That means that they're not getting the right. Totally. Yeah. So that's that's where it's much more tangible when you're talking about working with other people and especially when you have the responsibility of being a business owner, the buck stops with you. Mm. <laughs> you can outsource responsibility to your team as much as you like, but at the end of the day, they're not the one who's going to have the bank calling for the loan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so this is where that taking 100% responsibility is really about being able to go, okay, so what can I do? And to why change? is that why is that so empowering? Well, because otherwise, if you if you're waiting for everyone else to change, then you're never going to move forward. You're going to be stuck in that place. So if we take the example of being a business owner and a team member, and you've got a non-performing team member, let's say, you are wasting your time your money and your organizational culture on someone who is not aligned with your outcomes. Now you can keep them in your business, but they are going to start to rot the culture and you'll start to potentially lose great staff members as a result of that. And then what's going to happen when it's just you Mm. and the poor performing staff member? (laughs) When you, when you actually look at, well, this is now me taking responsibility. It's about recognizing that there is a problem and that you are the only one who has the opportunity to fix it, particularly when you're running your own business. Mm. More to the point. Well, actually, I'm going to rephrase that. I think that the 100% responsibility comes in everywhere. Mm. Relationships with partners and family members and suppliers and clients. So let's say that you've got a relationship with a client that's not going well. Well, 
you've got to take responsibility. They're your client. They're paying you money. Mm. If they're not happy, you've got to make decisions about, well, what can I do to change this circumstance and take take the action to be able to then get in front of them, have a heart-to-heart, move forward from where you are, but without actually looking inside yourself and saying, well, how did I contribute to where we are right now? Then you're not empowered to actually move from where you are to where you want to get to. I think it definitely gives people, like when people don't take responsibility, it then gives them that, um, they they, they then just do nothing Mm. and then think, oh, well, I can't do anything about it because it's not, it's not my fault. And that's not helping anyone with that. And that just makes relationships even worse well it's as a as a coach I'm always looking to in the initial conversations for someone to acknowledge that they know that they're in the situation that they're in and it's their fault because if they're outsourcing that responsibility to everyone else I know that change can be really difficult to create Mm. it's it's the the basic premise of coaching is being able to say well here's where I am and I know that it's my problem. So I know that I need to take action and make decisions to fix the problem. But if the problem is I'm not the problem at all, everyone else has the issues. So you need to come in and you need to change this team member and get that person doing this and get that person doing this. And the the, the business owner is not on their own bus. Well, then I I can't do anything. So it is very much about that being able to to recognize that where you are and where you want to get to. Mm. Yeah. It's a clear indication of a dysfunctional relationship. When, and this is any type of relationship, yeah. you know, when people are saying, oh, it's not me, it's them. Yeah. Yep. Like they're the one. It's like, hello, it takes two to tango. Like I had a fight with my mum the other week and we were both having a conversation and – she was suggesting that I do something and I didn't really want to do it and we were going back and forth until finally I snapped and I'll admit that I snapped at her. Um, she got upset. She went to her room and um, didn't come out and <laughs> I could tell that she was upset and if I was, if I had played victim mentality, I would have said, well, that's her problem. Like she shouldn't have said that. She shouldn't have been this way. I did everything I can and then I would have left – because I was visiting her, I would have left her place and gone home and without it being resolved and I would have felt awful mm. about it. Mm. Um, but I realised, oh, I, I, I must take responsibility for this. It, there was definitely something that I said that would have set her off and um, I need to go and fix this. So mm. I went into her room and had a good conversation with her and at the end of the night left feeling good. Mm. Um, so I want to share with everyone, you know, it – you may not feel like doing it, right? (laughs) It's not easy to do and you don't feel like going, okay, I know this happened, the car rammed into the back of my car, but I'm going to take responsibility. (laughs) It's not easy. It's not, and you don't want to. It's not. And that's, and that's why so many people do run the blame game because it's so much easier to outsource the responsibility because it feels better. It's much easier to say it's your fault you need to change and I'm going to walk off in a half and be indignant to, to to life, it is way more confronting to to it's not even swallow our pride, but it's it's way more confronting to to look at ourselves and go, okay, I am responsible for this situation, takes two to tango. And mum might come to the party, but in between the times where mum turns up and comes to the party, I'm gonna feel even more frustrated and awkward and the relationship is going to be fractured for longer and I'm going to hold all of this emotion. So I think just on that emotion part is one of the reasons why it's really cool to take 100% responsibility is the emotion is worse at the start, it's confronting and we have to go through our fears and our doubts and our insecurities to step above where we are and kind of go, okay, I'm going to do this and I've got to, I've got to put my big girl pants on and I've got to take, I've got to take the action. But it's almost like it's the Band-Aid where it's going to hurt a lot at the Mm. start, but then at least it's not going to go on for a really long period of time. It also means that you're not wasting energy in spending time in that indignant space waiting for everyone else. Instead, you're just moving forward. Action taken, done, move forward. 
next thing. The biggest way to work out, I think, if we're not taking responsibility is to just check in with our emotions. If we are feeling in any way that it's someone else's fault, (laughs) then you're not taking responsibility. So if you're playing the, the blame game, then it is very much about kind of going, okay, well, wait on that's hang on that's yeah okay I'm blaming someone else so what do I need to do so the first step is check in with the emotion and even those people who are a little bit uncomfortable about emotions then they're going to be feeling uncomfortable anyway so it's really about recognizing that there's that uncomfortability there the next thing would be to look at well what got me here what were the things that happened that got me to this point here feeling this way and what can I take responsibility for? So let's say it's a poor performing team member. Well, as a leader, have I been managing them well? Have I been training them well? Have I been giving them the resources that they need to be able to perform in their job? Are they empowered to make decisions or have I created a learned helplessness situation in in my business? Same sort of thing in, in terms of being around up the back of in a car. Okay, yep, left at that time, was running late, was a bit rushed, did put my foot on the brake too much. Okay, so here are all the things that has led me to this point. So that's step number two. And then can I just pause you there for a yeah. moment? With the team member example, I think it's important to be aware that what so re- reflecting on that point of what got me here, um, it might have been a series of many little things over a period of time. So it always this, is. This may not just be one thing that that happened. Mm. This could have been numerous things over the course of years even Absolutely. that have got you to that point. Yeah, and, and normally when – so, for, for example, if you've got a poor performing team member, assuming that they weren't hired last week, there were a bunch of steps that you took and there possibly is a pattern of behaviour that you're – conducting Mm. that's creating that problem so if you looked at other staff members or team members who may have left at a certain point in time were there things that you were doing that was similar that created the problem so really it is confronting it really is confronting looking at 100% responsibility because you do need to go back or there is that that the confrontation of going back and sort of saying well actually that person left because I did exactly the same thing. So now's the time to to create change. Mm. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so you were okay, so you were saying what oh, so what you got you here and reflecting on that. Yep. And then after that? So emotion, what got me here? Yep. And then if this is what got me here, what can I do right now to change the future reality of where I'm at? So with the with the non performing team member it's reflecting on, okay, so what got me here? And then what am I going to do? Well, number one is I'm going to plan to have a conversation Mm. (laughs) and say, well, this isn't working well, what needs to change? And then looking at how to adjust your own performance, your own management style to get the best out of that person. Or if the reality is they are not a right fit for your business, then actually have Again, a further difficult conversation, but that's way better. It, and what I mean by that is actually, are they a right match for your business? Maybe they're not. Maybe something needs to shift there. Mm. But that's going to be a way better decision to make than having them sit around for six to 12 months of you being frustrated and them not contributing to your business. Absolutely. Can I share an example that, that just popped to mind? Yeah, of course. Um, I hired someone and they were not performing to the level that I needed them to. And I started to find myself going, oh, they're not skilled enough or they're not at the, the, the right level or they don't listen, they don't do this, they don't do that. And then I realized, well, Christina, you didn't really do your due diligence when you hired them. Mm. <laughs> and I realized that I hadn't interviewed multiple people I just assumed that they were fine and I hired them on the spot basically Mm -hmm. because I didn't have a lot of experience with hiring people Um, so when I told them that I would no longer be needing their help um, and I went about hiring a new person I met someone who was great straight away and I was like no no 
I'm going to interview at least seven other people seven. before I make a decision. Yeah. So yeah. I put out an ad and um, for the position and I interviewed another seven people and, and that then told me that this person was still the best fit for the job and I've since hired him. His name's William and he's fantastic. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I guess I, I went from blaming the – the team member to then going, well, blaming them is not going to help my situation. It's not going to help. It's not going to help my business. Um, I need to make sure that this never happens again. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could have spent all your time blaming the other person, but they'd still be in your business and Mm. you wouldn't have William helping you out and getting stuff done. You'd be stuck. You'd be stuck back where you were. So, I mean, feel free to go ahead and blame everyone else. but (laughs) It just means you get to stay exactly where you are, which is, if that's where you want to be, you know, thumbs up to you. Um, but it's probably not what a business owner or yeah. anyone who wants to progress in their careers needs to to focus on. Do you think people are afraid of what taking responsibility will bring? Oh, for sure. For sure. Because when it, it's really confronting to take 100% responsibility because you've got to look inside of yourself and be prepared to go to the place that no one wants to go to voluntarily and say, I suck. (laughs) (laughs) I stuffed up. I'm not. All of my fears and doubts and insecurities, which everyone lives with, you have to look at those in the face and go, yeah, my fears and doubts about me being a great leader Mm. are right in front of me and I've got to admit that maybe I'm not the great leader that I thought I was. That's not a comfortable thing to do, to say I'm not a great driver, (laughs) (laughs) to say my reality right now, if I'm not happy with my reality right now and to be able to then say that is my fault is awful. It's It's not a fun place to be, but the reason why you would go there is to get out of there because if you're looking for everyone else to help you move from where you are to where you want to get to, you're never going to get there. Now, that's not to say that you don't employ help to get you there Mm. and to help move you forward and and to, to help challenge that status quo of the way that you think, but it's actually about being prepared to confront that fear and doubt and insecurity and go okay I didn't do so good I'm gonna do it better next time and next time is now so right now how am I gonna do it better yeah and it also means work (laughs) no one wants to do I know no one wants to do more work it's like oh no I have to do like more stuff that but totally worth it yeah totally worth it and I and I can talk from experience when you when you do take responsibility for for, for things in your life, I can just, I can hear the cat meow and she's coming yeah, up to she, say hello. She is. <laughs> <laughs> when you do take responsibility, you know, it's, you feel good and you feel good about the outcome because you're making that headway and you build that confidence in yourself and the trust in yourself because you start going, oh, I can do this stuff and I can make changes. And when th- bad things happen or, you know, bad, mediocre, any sort of good things happen, I have the ability to change it for the better. Well, I think you mentioned earlier about market conditions and that's a really good one as well. I'm hearing a little bit on the grapevine that people are finding business a little bit tougher at the moment and we can either sit waiting for conditions to change or we can zig when everyone's zagging. We can look at where the opportunities are and create product and innovate and Mm. we can think differently and we can look at new markets and we can look at new product development But we would only do that if we were taking 100% responsibility for the fact that we're not where we want to be and then make a decision to do that. That's where businesses do um, fail is when they're not actually going, okay, there's a problem. How do I fix Mm. it? How do I I take responsibility and make a choice to to do things differently to fix it? We've talked a lot about taking responsibility for circumstances, Mm. things that happen. Mm that are outside of our control. But what about taking responsibility for our own thoughts and emotions? Mm. I find that a lot of people will say things like, he made me really angry. Oh, I love or, that one. Or 
you're making me anxious, right? <laughs> and to me, that's another example of, hang on a second, you're saying that that other person is responsible for your anger or for your anxiety, when mm. in reality, you created the anger and the anxiety. It's really funny. I've, I've had recent conversations where the, the other person has sort of said, I'm sorry I made you feel that way. And my response is, no, you're not responsible in any way, shape or form for my feelings. <laughs> That's a really, you know, they sort of like, huh? Mm. Because then no one is responsible for my feelings. My feelings are my own. Mm. They're responsible for what they did. They're responsible for the way that they communicated. They're responsible for or the way they didn't communicate or what they didn't do. Yes. They're responsible for that and they can certainly apologise for that. But they are in no way responsible for my feelings. No one – because I get to choose how I feel. I get to choose whether I react in a certain way and that's about taking – 100% responsibility. So in a circumstance, I get to choose exactly how I feel. Now, the natural process is that I might, let's say a car accident, yeah. I might want to be aggressive and or or sad or um, you know, how, think of other upset, upset, frustrated. Frustra frustra thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Give me some negative emotions. But that's a choice because I then get to choose, well, I can accept reality. I can say, mm, that was annoying. Yes, there's going to be things I need to deal with. Yes, it's a little bit frustrating. And yes, there's going to be implications. But, oh, well, mm. can't change it. That's reality. Now I'm going to move forward and I'm going to have a more empowering emotion going forward. Um, you know, might have a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think. Definitely be like when you become aware that you can choose which emotions you feel mm -hmm. and then take responsibility for them, yeah. then that puts you in a massively empowering position. It's a really critical part of building that emotional intelligence as well. And I think every time, you know, just to be aware, every time you, you catch yourself saying, oh, he made me feel this way or, you know, this is making me really anxious – if you can change your language and say, I'm choosing to feel anxious right now. Mm. And that that simple switch of language mm. puts you into that empowering position because you realize that you are the one who is choosing to feel anxious and that you could equally then choose to not feel anxious. Yeah. It's not to say that if you if you're predisposed to feelings of anxiety, that it's it's not as simple to say, Well, I'm gonna not feel anxious anymore. That's okay. There's there's reality that there's, there's certain emotions that we feel on a consistent basis, but it is very much about that empowering way of kind of saying, well, hang on, I can continue to be anxious or I can think about whether there's another way that I can feel mm. and what is a better way to feel, what is a better way to move from where I am to where I want to get to. So it, yeah. it is that, that choice, being able to recognize the choice for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. I must say, sometimes I like love, like I relish in the being stressed and I like <laughs> can run around and like bang things. Not that I do this very often, but I did, I did this the other day and I just got really frustrated with even small things. And I just relish in the fact that I was so mad and like Aaron was hiding in the lounge room. He was like, don't talk to her. Cause she's like, <laughs> I don't know what she's going to do. And then I like stormed out and I wasn't angry at anyone in particular. It was just the world, you know? And then later on I was like, how is this helping me choosing to feel this way? This isn't helping anyone. So, you know, decided to change things up a little bit. <laughs> well, sometimes it's good to sit and wallow. We all have those moments. It's just about whether that's helping us mm. ongoing. And I think definitely it's okay, it's okay to have – it is okay to have negative emotions – no one is perfect, but it's about going, okay, have I, have I done my wallowing? Yes. <laughs> Am I ready to move forward? Probably should. Am I going to? All right. All right. And then <laughs> taking the step, taking the step from there. Absolutely. Love it. Well, Shannon, this has been fascinating and you know, I love talking about this stuff. So yeah. it's been so great having Likewise. you on Thank the show. You so much. 
So Shannon, tell us a bit about your business and what have you got coming up? that you're excited about? Ah, thank you. Well, uh, my business works exclusively with small business owners and I'm really passionate about helping small business owners normalize all of their experiences and their emotions and and the challenges that they have that that they have. But what's exciting is that I've got a new program coming out and it is for micro and solopreneur business owners who and it's called how do I do this business stuff. So it's <laughs> Oh, it's like the S H word? Yeah. Okay. But, but it's but it's actually written as S H I U double F. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. the whole idea is that running a business is challenging. And especially when you're a solopreneur. So it's a group coaching program where there's also going to be um, content released weekly throughout the program and then group coaching to help support business owners on their journey and a a group of supportive like-minded business owners so that's launching this month um and i'm excited to to amazing share that with you and if people want to learn more about that program or connect with you where can they go my website is www.inspired hyphen outcomes.com and you can find me on linkedin as uh, Shannon Merlo business coach as well as on Facebook under Inspired Outcomes Consulting. Love it. Thanks again Shannon. My pleasure. Thank you. A huge thanks to Shannon Merlo for being such a wonderful guest on the show this week. Knowing her personally, I can confidently say that she's one of the most thoughtful, genuine, caring and compassionate people I know and I couldn't think of anyone better to support you in your business journey. So if you are a small business owner and you are looking to take your business to the next level and grow it into a business that you love, then I highly recommend you reach out to Shannon and learn more about her program. I do believe it's a pilot program, which means that she's currently offering it at a very affordable price. Um, So make sure you take action on that if you hear this podcast before the end of 2019. Um, I'll link to where you can connect with Shannon in the show notes at thecmethod.com slash 231, or you can go straight to her website. It's inspired-outcomes.com. All right. And if you did find this podcast of value, then hit me up on Instagram and let me know. Let me know what you thought. Uh, my my handle is at cjcanters. Um, you know how I'm all like all over Insta now. So um, hit me up, let me know what you thought. And that brings this week's episode to a close. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I'll, um, I'll talk to you next week. I'm Christina Cantors and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed.